Welcome back, everybody, to a new episode of my Anatomy Bench series. Today we are going to be looking at the skeleton when it is lying on its back. Many treatments begin in this position, and depending on the technique that is being used, the focus lies on different anatomical structures. As you can see, today we are starting out with the bone and the joint system. Chiropractors, physiotherapists and osteopaths like to work with the bone system and try to influence it by centering the joints through mobilizations and manipulations. They also take advantage of reflexes that are being triggered by their maneuvers. This way they balance out the muscle and the nervous system. For the students and pros among you, I would like to draw your attention especially to the joint clefts because they are not entirely correct throughout my 3D model. The wrists are still giving me a hard time and I work hard to make them more accurate. Maybe you want to reflect on how they should actually look like and behave in a living organism. Here you can already see how the deeper muscle layers are slowly being faded in and while we can admire the adductors or the muscles of the lower leg, I shortly want to address why I even started this video at the feet. Personally, I like to start my treatments right there. It gives my client time to get used to my treatment and it also allows me to get a comprehensive picture of the whole body from the ground up. I'm very curious if you have learned other rules in your training and maybe you want to leave them down in the comments. I'm always curious to find out how other cultures and treatment styles like to approach their clients. Here we have a very good view of the psoas muscle and you can imagine why this muscle is so difficult to reach given to its deep location within the body. It also becomes apparent how important it is to work with this muscle because it has such a profound impact on our posture and spine health. The same applies to the pectoralis minor which likes to be under tension or is generally shortened depending on whether clients like to sit in front of the computer or do too much strength training and tend to skip their stretching and mobility classes. Here's another view from the psoas from the other side and you can see how now the adductors are slowly being covered by the quads and the last superficial muscle layer is being revealed in its entirety. A few more thoughts about the general advantages of this position while we watch the last round with all the muscle layers shown. A lot of therapists that I have talked to like to have their clients on their back because they can maintain constant eye contact with their client and get instant feedback what the treatment actually does to the client. Some people, for example, will never admit to being in too much pain verbally, but their eyes will tell you. Of course, you can also see the rest of their facial expressions and hear their voice clearly and this gives you a ton more information about their overall state and improves your chances to actually help them. I also prefer this pose to treat the cervical spine while sitting behind the client. This way I simply feel the vertebrae and the cervical spine muscles way better and I have much more control over the movement of the head of my client. Gravity also helps me out in this situation because it helps me to build up the right pressure without having to exert myself too much. This is especially important on a long day where you have many back-to-back -back treatments. But I'm also sure that you have already come up with your own ways and that there are many different approaches out there and I'm happy if you care to share them down in the comment section. While we slowly complete our journey for today, I just want to add that I hope you found this helpful and I'm looking forward to see you soon back inside the lab.